So we continue our morning session, and it is also my great pleasure to introduce our last speaker, uh, Professor Yuri Vasilevsky. He is from the uh, he's deputy director of the famous Institute of Numerical Mathematics in, in Moscow, named by Marchuk. And uh, we are happy to have you here, please. Thank you very much. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers. Uh, for inviting me to this conference. Uh, second, I want to give some relationship with Olga Alexandrovna Ladyzhinska. It is strange relation. Uh, so she started in her study with finite differences, but she used finite, the finite differences to prove existence of boundary value problems. Uh, so she found made a foundation for using finite differences for boundary value problems in theoretical analysis. And we basically, we solve approximately boundary value problems. So this is our relationship. Um, the title of my talk is Stable Numerical Schemes for Modeling Hemodynamic Flows in Time Dependent Domain. And uh, first of all, I have to give a disclaimer that uh, stable, by stable I mean uh, schemes with uh, uh, with uh, stability estimates, uh, and I will show the stability estimates in my talk for different uh, problems. This is joint talk with Maxim Malchansky. He will be a speaker this evening. Uh, Alexander Danilov and Alexander Lazovsky. Alexander Alexander's uh, both work in. Uh, Institute of Numerical Mathematics. Maxim Alshansky is professor of Houston University. And also we have affiliation at Sechenov University. Sechenov University is uh, the oldest uh, medical university in Russia, the first uh, Moscow State Medical University named by Sechenov. Okay. So uh, in my talk, I will uh, explore three ideas, numerical ideas. Uh, which go uh, through all problems. First idea, since we are dealing with moving domains, physical meshes are also moving. Since they are moving, it is uh, impossible to apply the method of lines, which split discretization in space and discretization in time. Since the mesh, um, since the cells, Ask use in time. So, uh, in order to, and of course, it is possible to derive discretizations uh, for space and time for such moving meshes. But in this case, you have a coupling of all layers, of layers of two layers. And we want to avoid it. We want to apply the method of lines. That's why. We reformulate all problems in this talk in, uh, in a steady reference domain, but by the, at the cost of unsteady coefficients. So it means that instead of uh, solving uh, uh, physical equations in physical domains, physically move, uh, moving domains, we solve it in reference domain, steady domain, but we should not pay for that. The second idea is that we want to construct a numerical scheme which allows us to have large uh, time steps. Uh, how do we do this? We take fully implicit scheme in time, fully implicit scheme in time, and then we linearize the appeared nonlinear system of algebraic equations. Uh, by extrapolation some coefficients in time. So to get a linear system at, at each time step. So, and we managed to show that this uh, scheme and this uh, technology allows uh, us to provide stability estimate for the numerical scheme for large time steps. And on the other hand, at each time step, we have to solve only one linear system of equations with sparse matrix. 
And the, set, the third idea is uh, we uh, use uh, a higher than uh, uh, linear uh, order of finite elements for velocities and displacements. Actually, we use piecewise quadratic velocities, continuous and piecewise quadratic displacements. And uh, for pressure, we use continuous piecewise linear pressure. It is known that such pair Taylor Hood is Taylor Hood pair, finite element pair, it is LBB stable. And why we use it? Because uh, this pair provides a feasible, feasible compromise between uh, coarseness of uh, the mesh and accuracy of the result. Uh, actually, we can afford to have meshes with few tens of thousands of cells, of tetrahedral cells, which is actually very coarse cells for practical problems. And these uh, meshes uh, provide us systems depending on the problem with few hundred thousand of unknowns, linear systems with 200, 300 thousand of unknowns. And these linear systems with sparse matrices can be solved by black box solver, which is MOOPS factorizer. It is very important that we don't care about the scalability of the linear solver, how to precondition it and how to work. We just use a black box. So all three ideas are not new, of course. We just exploit them in our uh, applications. The computational technology we use uh, uh, is based on our open source software Anis3D, uh, which was developed 15 years ago. And uh, we use unstructured uh, tetrahedral meshes, LBB stable pairs, as I already mentioned, finite element pairs, MOOMS as a black box parallel solver for sparse linear systems. And uh, in practice, we use from 10 to Hundred computational cores for simulations, and it takes us from half an hour to up to ten hours, twenty hours of simulation. So it's a, it is affordable on uh, uh, modern mach machines. We don't need supercomputing. So first problem is Navier-Stokes equations in moving domain. So let us uh, start the movie. Uh, just application, clinical application. <clears throat> so this is a CT, um, uh, CT data from a patient beating heart. And we are interested in, um, in uh, simulation of blood flow in the left ventricle. This is the voxel grid uh, uh, from a DICOM file. This is the computational mesh, the tetrahedral mesh, which follows uh, the beating uh, left ventricle. And this is our computational domain. In this domain, we have uh, mitral and aortic mm, valves. They are open and closed in diastolic and systolic phases. And the flow is uh, driven by the motion of the, of the domain and the tetrahedral mesh has the same topology in all time steps, but the positions of nodes are moving. And we can solve Navier-Stokes equations and post-process solution, compute everything, whatever we want. So this is the idea of, uh, of the technology we apply. Let us stop the movie and... Uh, uh, and uh, let's switch to the equations. So our... Prerequisites for our Navier-Stokes equations is that let, let's keep this uh, uh, walls. Uh, uh, so we consider only the flow of um, uh, fluid, incompressible fluid, omega f. And this is the reference domain, which is uh, mapped uh, to a physical domain uh, by transformation psi, which is known. We know it because we have a sequence of our computational meshes and the sequence of computational meshes define this transformation actually. 
and V and U denote velocities and displacements in the fluid domain. And if we know displacement, and displacement is known because uh, we know the shift of each node of computational mesh, then we can define this transformation. And uh, the its gradient of this transformation is uh, called uh, uh, deformation gradient, very important standard. And uh, uh, Jacobian of this uh, 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 deformation gradient is denoted by J. So we also shall use uh, Cauchy stress tensor for fluid and pressure uh, pressure uh, of fluid, and we assume that the fluid is incompressible. Now we write nonlinear Stokes equations in the reference domain, which is steady, not in physical domain. That's why this uh, navier Stokes dynamic equation looks uh, strange. It uh, incorporates uh, this uh, uh, deformation gradient and its uh, determinant here f and j because of uh, writing them in a reference domain. And actually in applications, the reference domain is just the initial domain of the initial state of the physical domain. Um, this is because, uh, again, because we, we write it in physical, uh, in, steady, in steady reference domain, and this is actually arbitrary Lagrangian Ehlerian form formulation. Acceleration does not in, is not involved with, um, uh, acceleration is written as, is, as if in physical domain. So uh, the fluid incompressibility again has uh, the price for the reference domain. We have J and F coefficients here. And similarly, constitutive relation uh, uh, for Newtonian fluid also has uh, the price of this factor because of it is written in the physical in, in the reference domain. Okay. Excuse now, me. Uh, here, uh, uh, in the last uh, row, uh, f minus t if uh, is f minus one transposed. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you. This is just a abbreviation, quite quite standard. <clears throat> okay. Now, finite element scheme is obtained uh, by first uh, weak formulation of the navier stokes equations. Uh, then we replace uh, Sobolev uh, and L2 spaces for velocity and pressure by uh, the finite element subspaces for uh, the velocity and pressure. This is standard uh, technique, finite element technique. And we import boundary conditions. Uh, I either do nothing uh, on out outflow. Actually, uh, I will not uh, uh, dwell on it because uh, in practice, we have to add uh, uh, external uh, impact of um, uh, cardiovascular system. Uh, and on the boundary of our ventricle or our domain, we impose uh, no penetration, no slip uh, condition, which means that the velocity of fluid just equals the velocity of, uh, of the boundary. And uh, uh, so this is the, uh, the, the finite element formulation and linearization here appears only in one nonlinear term here, the, the inertia term, uh, and you see only one uh, k uh, uh, factor here, which is unknown. I recall that jk and fk are known because of known, uh, uh, of known motion of the, of, of, of the mesh. So this, uh, this integral has one uh, unknown VK. Here we have one unknown VK, and each term here has one unknown VK. So we have a linear system. Uh, for this linear system, this, is, uh, this linear system is semi-implicit in a sense that it is linearized fully implicit scheme. It produces one linear system per time step. It, uh, it, it, is written, uh, it was written as first order in time, but it could be generalized to the second order uh, um, in time by, for instance, backward difference formula in time. And we can prove that it is unconditionally stable in a sense that it, uh, it, ho it, it, it has possess stability estimate without CFL restriction on the time step. And uh, we can even prove that it is uh, second order accurate under certain assumptions. I skipped uh, these assumptions for the accuracy analysis. I just show the assumptions to show its um, 
uh, the stability estimate. First of all, we assume that the, the, uh, the, uh, grad, the deformation gradient is not very large. It is not small, but it is not huge. Uh, that second, we assume that it is stable uh, LBD, uh, uh, LBD stability of finite element spaces. And we assume that delta T is not uh, huge also. Uh, and this uh, assumption is related not with the spatial discretization in space, but it is related only with the velocity of motion of, of the boundary. Uh, and uh, the stability estimates look like this. So we have two cases. Uh, one case when the gradient of, uh, when the velocity of the boundary uh, is uh, small compared to viscosity and the opposite case when it is large compared to the viscosity. Actually, uh, the estimate for uh, the velocity is the same, but we, I, I will, I should comment it. So actually we, um, estimate, st provide stability estimates, not for the whole velocity, but only for the component of the velocity W, uh, which, um, mm, which appears in the decomposition of the velocity field uh, uh, of this type. D1 here is uh, uh, a divergence free uh, velocity field, which uh, has uh, uh, exactly the, uh, uh, the velocity on the boundary uh, provided by the boundary. So V1 takes all data from the moving boundary and uh, W uh, provides all uh, the reactions, all, all, all the remaining part of the velocity. And we can estimate uh, the component uh, for W. And uh, this is standard uh, estimations. And if uh, the viscosity of the fluid is uh, small, then we have this extra factor, but for finite time t, uh, we have uh, the estimate. Uh, the next problem is uh, uh, fluid structure interaction when we have uh, uh, unknown. Uh, so we have the transformation. Now we also add uh, the walls of uh, our vessel or whatever. And uh, this is omega. Uh, structure omega fluid two subdomains reference subdomains and physical subdomains and now we don't know explicitly uh, the transformation psi so we have to compute it both in in structure subdomains and in fluid subdomain again we have the same machinery we have uh, uh, relation between the transformation and the displacements and we have to define displacements in fluid domain because we don't have equations for them. And uh, again, we have two uh, types of uh, stress tenders uh, in fluid and in structure and two pressures if uh, we have incompressible structure as well. So now we have uh, uh, two types of dynamic equations. One equation is in, for fluid. This is Navier-Stokes equation, arbitrary Lagrangian Eilerian um, formulation and uh, the equation of the motion of uh, the elastic structure. And again, the price for writing them in uh, reference domain, in the reference uh, subdomains is uh, that uh, we have these factors F, J, and so on. So the kinematic equation uh, is just direct relation between displacements and uh, velocity in the structure. For fluid incompressibility, we have again the divergence free equation and the same uh, uh, constitutive relation for the fluid stress standard. Actually, all these equations are universal equations. They are not, uh, they do not depend on our wish. But also, we have to add to the model uh, two more equations which are user dependent. First uh, is a constitutive relation for the solid stress standard, how the Cauchy stress depends on the parameter of, of the model. Uh, for instance, in case of uh, linear elasticity, these are Lamech coefficients lambda and mu. Uh, yes. Uh, for in case of nonlinear models, uh, there may be very different uh, uh, parameters uh, which are involved in, in the, this relationship. So this is the choice of user how to use this relay, uh, constitutive relation based on uh, available physical experiments for the material. 
And the second uh, equation we have to add is uh, artificial equations for displacements in the fluid subdomain. Uh, again, uh, our Navier-Stokes equations are defined define define only velocities, but we need displacements in fluid subdomain because we have to define uh, we have to define uh, the transformation psi, right? So we have to add artificially uh, an equation, and this is the most tricky uh, part of uh, of this technology uh, to add this. Uh, uh, artificial equations for displacements in fluid, not dictated by physics. For instance, it may be vector Laplace equations or other equations. Uh, the, we are free to choose any equation uh, uh, for the displacements in fluid. The only restriction, and very important restriction, that these equations should provide non tangling of the mesh, because if uh, the displacements will be non-physical, then the mesh in the fluid may be tangled and we can uh, not proceed with uh, integration in time further. Also, we have to add initial boundary conditions. Uh, they depend on application. I will not stop on them. Uh, I just mentioned that the interface condition between, uh, between fluid and uh, structure is uh, continuity of the normal uh, Cauchy stress um, between fluid and in fluid and structure. And, and by the way, uh, this um, idea to add the uh, uh, displacement uh, in, in a fluid uh, subdomain is called so-called monolithic approach. And the philosophy of this monolithic approach is in each, uh, that in each uh, subdomain, you should have the same uh, set of unknowns, of variables, displacements and velocities and pressure. Okay, so uh, the idea to construct the scheme is the same uh, in, uh, uh, as in Navier-Stokes case, we write integral formulation, replace uh, uh, fully implicit, uh, in, apply fully implicit scheme in time, and replace all uh, 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 functional spaces by the finite element subspaces, um, Taylor Hood uh, uh, finite elements, and linearize all uh, terms uh, with nonlinear non uh, terms uh, by extrapolation in time. For instance, this is an inertia uh, term uh, in the Navier-Stokes equation. Again, you see here only one k plus one, which is um, which is um, unknown. Uh, now, f and j uh, uh, deformation gradients are not known, but we extrapolate them in time from the previous time step. This is a uh, definition of a tilde. Um, and uh, the term for uh, nonlinear elasticity, for instance, uh, here I show uh, the so-called sanguinan Tergov material, which is uh, generalization of linear elasticity to large deformation. And again, you see here that we have only one K plus one uh, term here. So again, this is a linear system. Of equation and uh, the scheme provides strong coupling on interface. It is seen implicit in the sense that it produces one linear system uh, uh, with sparse matrix per time step, maybe first or second order in time. Uh, and again, we can prove that it is unconditionally stable in the sense of stability estimate without CFA restriction, uh, proved under assumptions that uh, this. Uh, that uh, this uh, material is something non Kirgov, but our experiments show that it is applicable for other materials as well, like near hooking or other incompressible and compressible materials. And uh, the, the most important restriction is that our artificial equation for displacements in, in uh, fluid provides uh, non degeneracy, non uh, tangling of the mesh at each time step. Then we can prove stability estimate, and this is how it looks like. Actually, this is actually this is the, kinem the, the kinematic of uh, kin the, kin the, kin the kinetic energy of uh, of of the structure. This is the elastic energy. This is the kinetic energy of the fluid, and this is the dissipative uh, dissipation term, and it is bounded by initial state. Um, and example. 
hemodynamic flow. So we consider a benchmark uh, suggested 20 years ago by uh, uh, Luca Formaggio uh, and co-authors. So this is a part of artery uh, of the length 50 millimeters. Uh, the diameter is 10 millimeters. Uh, the uh, the uh, thickness of the wall is one millimeter. It mimics artery of a human. And um, uh, the material uh, properties uh, are also mimic, uh, mimic uh, mm, human artery, nonlinear material. And on the left uh, uh, side of, of, the, of this tube, we impose stepwise in time uh, pressure, which is uh, large uh, for the first three milliseconds, and then it uh, drops to zero. So stepwise uh, pressure in time. And on the right part of uh, the tube, we impose uh, free flow outflow conditions. So this um, stepwise uh, function for pressure provides a so-called so -called pulse wave, pressure wave in this flexible tube. So in different time, uh, times, you see how it propagates. Actually, we exaggerate by factor 10 uh, the displacements of the wall to see it, uh, how, how, how it is uh, shifted. And what is important in this, uh, this is a very tough benchmark, actually. Uh, what is important? So uh, the pressure wave uh, goes through this uh, tube within uh, uh, 10, 10 milliseconds. To solve this uh, benchmark, we need only 100 steps, time steps. Actually, very coarse time stepping. Uh, we uh, uh, considered three uh, measures, computational measures, with uh, 20 uh, uh, in the 20,000 cells in the coarsest mesh, and 120 uh, in 30 in the in the finest grid. And just wrote here, draw here. Uh, the displacements of this point. This is the central point of the inner wall here. Radial and radial displacements and axial displacements. And we see that these three curves corresponding to three different meshes, they almost coincide. Actually, we have convergence already on the coarsest grid. Actually, we get correct, absolutely correct solution on 20,000 cells. Um, okay, the last, the last application is uh, fluid porous structure interaction. Uh, when we assume that the flow, uh, that uh, the, the, the wall, uh, the structure is permeable, is porous, and the flow can, uh, uh, can be driven uh, through this wall. Again, all the same uh, prerequisites, but we add also poroelastic stress, which is uh, a combination of the Cauchy stress and the Darcy uh, pressure uh, for the fluid which is filtra filtrated. Uh, also, we introduce porosity of the wall, uh, uh, of, of the structure, and uh, we can uh, define uh, uh, the average density of the porous media, uh, which involves the density of, of the elastic structure and density of the fluid. And also we introduce a so-called filtration flux, which is difference between the flow uh, of fluid in the wall and uh, the, the, the velocity of fluid in the, the wall and the velocity of structure. And also, we have to introduce a permeability tender. Actually, porosity and permeability are coefficients typical for filtration for Darcy flows. And we use a formalism of um, bio. So this is bio model, which couples uh, Darcy flows uh, and uh, structure velocities uh, with uh, the elastic term and the Darcy term. And also, we have, of course, uh, Navier-Stokes equations in the three stream uh, subdomain, uh, mass conservation for the fluid in uh, free stream uh, subdomain, and uh, so-called um, mixture compressibility 
condition for the fluid and structure in um, in the wall. Uh, this is also Darcy model. Uh, as for kinematic equations uh, for um, which relates displacements and velocities uh, of the wall, um, how many years? Zero. Okay, I finish it. Uh, I just show. Uh, I just show the same uh, statement that we can prove a stability estimate without CFA restriction for this uh, scheme. Uh, it looks like um, uh, estimate from above for kinetic energy and the free energy of the flow and, um, uh, and uh, some dissipative term. And uh, we can um, pass through the benchmarks again uh, when this uh, flow of cube, uh, uh, wall of cube is uh, uh, porous and uh, penetrable. Uh, and we can show physical solutions. Actually, many, uh, these first two problems are discussed in our books, which was published two years ago. And the latest uh, problem was published just recently. Thank you very much. Please questions. May I ask you one? Uh, let me first explain because not all people in the auditorium in the subject. You are talking about a problem where you have a, a kind of divergence free condition. Yeah? But it is not like, like in the standard stocks, Navier stocks, where we simply write divergence V is zero. And it is well known that this condition creates real problems in approximation because. We cannot arbitrarily select finite dimensional spaces for velocity and for pressures. They should be coordinated, and this is called in sub condition or LBB condition, as it is strictly on. And we know which pairs satisfy this condition, which not. So my question is: but now in your in your condition, it is this f minus one. How this f minus one may uh, deform, may change? Uh, so the, the pairs which are valid for classical case, will they be valid for, for your case? Or you, you need to construct some special approximation? No, no, no. In case of now, yes, top situation. So this is, this is the statement. We need any, we can use any LBB stable pairs. Uh, we, uh, and uh, Taylor Hood, uh, finite element, just uh, uh, <coughs> uh, version of, of this L, LBB stable pairs. As for f of this f, uh, we didn't uh, apply any regularization or stabilization, just as is. You have no pressure in your model. But yes, what? I have a question. Yeah, we have pressure. We have yes. flexibility. Uh, can I speak? Olivier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah please. Okay, um, very interesting talk because uh, you have a, a mathematical uh, uh, exactitude. And I compare with people who do uh, RLE, arbitrary uh, Lagrange and Eulerian. Yes. What is the connection of your method? And uh, the, um, uh, do you notice any difference in computing time and in uh, precision with ALE? Actually, we have a new formulation for dynamics of uh, both fluid and um, structure. For instance, in the case of Navier-Stokes equation, this is uh, the ALE formulation here. But it, it seems more general than ALE. Well, it is ALE in the sense that acceleration is not uh, treated by F and J. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is written as in physical domain and all remaining terms are written in the reference domain. Yeah, okay. So when, when, you, when you take uh, uh, F to be such that the um, a solid part is fixed, you get ALE. If it is fixed, if it is fixed, then this is just Navier-Stokes equation. Ah, you see here. But it is fixed. It is zero. No, I'm talking about the solid part. Solid is fixed, but uh, fluid moves. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it should be. 
then we, we go to here, right? Yeah. So if it is fixed, this is, ah, this is just, just a moment. But if it is fixed, if the wall is fixed, then the, the displacements in fluid may be also uh, zero. So this is also fixed. This is. Uh -huh. Okay. So, well, maybe uh, I will ask you your paper and, and think. Uh, so just, it, it just uh, uh, turns to, uh, just to turn to navier stokes equations in physical domain. That's it. <clears throat> you have told us about the uh, hemodynamics in the tubes, but uh, there are so many junctions of the tubes in our organism. So what happens there then? I see. So the answer is, uh, uh, actually we can solve uh, three-dimensional uh, flows in any type of uh, shapes of the domain. It doesn't matter if it's a hard chamber or uh, a set of vessels with bifurcations. It doesn't matter. We just solve navier stokes equations. But I should say that uh, if we consider the whole cardiovascular system, which is composed of many, many arteries and veins, then of course we have uh, to apply uh, model reduction. And uh, the, these models, uh, uh, which are applicable in clinical applications, they are not uh, dealing with navier stokes equations. They, these are so-called 1D hemodynamic uh, uh, models, which allows to simulate on a laptop uh, a uh, flow in the whole body or in a part of original uh, blood flow um, because of model reduction. It's one dimensional uh, equations on a graph or on a network of vessels. Nobody applies the Navier-Stokes for the full uh, arterial system. Any more questions? It is not the case. So thank you very much. Let's go for break.